This week on Down on Fire, we are once again at Colombo City Centre and we are checking out their beautiful residences. And today on the show, I'm speaking to Salinda. with me and we are chilling and relaxing at Colombo City Centre, uh, these beautiful apartments that we have here. Um, thank you for being here on the show. Pleasure. Nice to have you. Thank so you very much. these days we are all getting used to the new norm of work, working from home. Uh, yeah. How is that treating you? Do you like the Loving work? it. Really? Loving it. Always have. Oh wow. I really enjoy it. The opposite, I just want to run somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and I live so far, it's always a trip. I'm like from Piliandar to here, it's like a cruise. But nowadays I'm chilling here, <laughs> just to let you know. Nice. All right. Nice so, view. <laughs> I thought you were seeing it with me. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's speak a little bit about you. How 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 has it been? You know, battling through the whole corporate world for so long. In terms of my entire tenure at, uh, in in the work environment. Yeah. Uh, I've loved it. I've been really fortunate to have had some really good jobs, uh, working for good bosses, uh, nice environments, and uh, with fun teams. So I think I'm reaching about my 34th or 35th year in the corporate environment and loving it as much now as I ever did. Okay. You know, this whole corporate world is something, you know, nowadays a lot of people feel like, you know, they should be their own entrepreneurs. They're feeling that they should branch into their own creative cocoon and sort of make their way into it. What would you say to these ambitious youngsters? I think it's a great move. But when you were growing up, did you ever think that you know you should have your own creativity and make it a make it your own business one? Yeah, day? I did, but I'm a bit of a lazy bugger, so I didn't <laughs> want to I didn't want to take the risk on my own. It's annoying, but, no, you yeah, have to take the famous people. Yeah, exactly. I'd much rather get my paycheck at the end of the day and go let somebody else yeah. worry about that. But the thing is that when we were growing up, there were very uh, there were limited options in terms mm. of what we could do. So if you think, think of people who really started up operations at that time, some of them made it, uh, you know, uh, really well. They uh, were very successful, but there weren't the kind of opportunities available now. Mm. But on the flip side, right now, everyone wants to be in a startup. That is true. And if you look at the success rate of the startups in Sri Lanka, you can count them on the hands of one finger. True. There's always uh, fingers of one hand. Yeah, there's always its peak and boom. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's a lot of hype, a lot of excitement around it, and everybody has a great idea. But the thing is, it's not as easy as just bringing an idea, getting some money and making a business out of it. So many people have failed in, in that, but then at the same time, you can't just look at failure and say, I don't want to do it. Mm. So I think if there are great opportunities, people should take it. Uh, but there are people who much rather, you know, sometimes get a salary and go home. Yeah. And uh, you know, we still have managed to have decent lives and decent uh, employment. So 
Yeah, because it's although they say, yeah, although say, although they say it's risque, uh, mm. some people really enjoy that. Some people rush. like that hype. Yeah, Absolutely. they love that rush. Yeah. Mm. I think I lose all the hair. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I can see even with the salary given. <laughs> That's with the vibes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's. I don't have that problem as well. I was asked to play good host, so oh, thank I was you very much. Given this one to my side, thank to give you. It to you. Okay, and that's all I've done so right. far. Um, I didn't make this. I can assure you that. Nice. Mm, it's quite nice. Mm. That. That a lot better with a shot of vodka. Uh, <laughs> I thought it's there already. Is it? Is it? It's there, right? I don't know these ones. Yeah, these ones who make it. You don't. Hear, I don't know whether I'm drinking yours. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm just terribly <laughs> playing host. <laughs> uh, but uh, so you are attached to MAS, and yeah. that's that's like one of the you know one of the big playgrounds to be a part of. Mm. Um, you have so many youngsters walking through the doors, trying to be inspired by you. What would you say is lacking or missing today? Or is there something good? Do you see there's a good in the youth today, or there's a bad in the youth? Do you feel that we are very entitled? Okay, I being the like being the that. father of two young uh, sons, well, not yeah. so young anymore, yeah. um, but they are they're in their late twenties, early thirties, uh, and being in an environment that most of the guys come or, and girls come into work with us mm. right now are younger by, than my yeah. own kids. Um, what I find is that the attention span and the uh, the commitment to uh, a work environment is limited. Mm. Not everybody wants to put in the hard yards. Mm. And the thing is, in a corporate environment, for you to shine, you have to be able to do better than the others that come in with you. So you're in an environment of 100, 200, 300, sometimes 1,000 people. How do you shine? Mm. That takes a bit of hard work. It takes some effort and it takes some uh, motivation on, on the part of the individual. Um, I find that sometimes uh, uh, the generation now, they have lots of distractions. They have lots of other things that they can go back to. Um, and fall back on and as we were talking about opportunities in startups and so many different things going on um, that sometimes we see that um, that real drive lacking yeah and also they, the, they feel like you know jobs everything has to happen very fast yeah. I yeah. also feel that that entitlement thing I actually I don't know whether it, I have come to the terms come to terms with the fact that I feel like because we're on social media so much the validation that we get on social media we like to expect it in real life yeah. that so doesn't happen people yeah. don't care <laughs> and <laughs> the thing is also what do you do on social media you generally curate all your friends lists everything yeah. to people who say nice things about you. exactly <laughs> if anybody starts give you a hard time on Not facebook <laughs> go on, go on. Right? so so in that kind of rarefied atmosphere that yeah. you create for yourself you're not used to taking the flack yeah. and in a work environment where you're dealing with real human beings on a real time, yeah. that can become a problem. Yeah, and slack is what you're going to get. Absolute, yeah. Absolutely, and sometimes what happens, uh, but on the flip side, on the, on, the, on the positive side, the kids that are coming out now uh, these days into the job environment are so exposed to so mm. much more. I mean, I predate the fax machine. Yeah. Right? When, when I saw my first fax machine, it was like magic. <laughs> so going from that to a video call seated yeah. on a you know on a bus to somewhere True. is just like a complete change. And to be yeah. able to make that transition has been an amazing journey for me personally. But kids are coming nowadays loaded with so much information, with access to so much information, uh, and they're far smarter than we are. So um, I think if you can excite them, if you can give them a motivating story. Uh, you can get some really good product out of out of people. That's good. And also, I always say it's always in the boss's hand a little bit to see where you actually get motivated or not. I think so. Yeah. And also, there is where you have all the bosses that can become a real stifling yeah. factor like when the when they have not evolved. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah I think it's a, a big part of the responsibility of the boss to stay relevant. Mm to be in touch with what's happening on social media, to be in touch with what's happening in the generation that's working for you. Exactly. So true. That's actually a point. We're going to get into a break. When we do come back on the other side, I'm going to speak about Home Sweet Home with him. And also, uh, mm -hmm. he's very active on Facebook, loves uh, animals. <laughs> uh, we're going to speak about all of these. When we do come back, do stick around. It's done on.
Lago Tropical Italian Bistro. Uh, it came all the way up here, so food will taste good. Uh, I hope you at least like the food. I'm sure I do. I feel like I, I have it. cooked it with all the love and affection that I can put onto a plate. Brilliant. Thank you. Looks good. Thank you, Anik. You're kind. Smells good too. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so, uh, we were talking about life at home for you. Uh, I see a lot of... So, we communicated on social media, which is super cool. Uh, he was very quick to respond on Facebook, which is also <laughs> fabulous. Um, but tell me, you, you, have, you love animals? Love, yeah. Okay. How many... Has it been like um, always? Two, yeah, always. I've always had pets. Always had various creatures running around the house. <laughs> um, but... Uh, <laughs> Um, at the moment, we have two dogs, mm. a cat that comes and goes as she pleases, right. yeah. about nine galibas that turned up in our garden, a uh, garden full of monkeys that turn up and go. Wow. That, those are not pets. Yeah, those are just true. like, like wow. temporary <laughs> residents yeah, in okay. the garden. Uh, and this and is where? This is Batramulda. Ah, we have okay, a house. Well, fair enough, Batramulda. because yeah. the monkeys, I don't see that they live in no, a it's No, right? uh, they're actually an endangered species called uh, Purple Face Leaf Eaters. Oh, okay. And uh, we've got a nice big troop in our garden. Oh, superb. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So you, it has been, a, animals have been a part of your life always? Always. Yeah. yeah. I have five dogs, so I can understand. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so home, home front, are you like a morning person, night person? I'm a morning person. I get up pretty early in the morning and I generally, when at the moment I'm staying in an apartment in Colombo because we're doing some work at home. Uh, but um, I usually get up at about 4.30 or 5. Why? Anyone who works in this industry <laughs> that you are in, no, no, all I of you all think. just have like very yeah. high standards to maintain. Are you the type who gets to work on time? Like you, I don't go to work anymore. I work no, from I'm home. <laughs> like okay, let's say there's a meeting. You are like even today. Yeah, you were like on time. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. Dead punch. Yeah. How, how have you maintained that? Especially in I don't know. I think it has just become a habit. And uh, thankfully, my two sons like I like that as well. I think it came from my father, who was very regimental about right. everything. Um, but uh, and um, he was very strict about us being punctual as well. Mm. So that has kind of that's one of the few things that stuck. That's good. Yeah. That's amazing. But you know, yeah. especially Sri Lanka, we are so used to the fact that you know, uh, five minutes yeah. no, it's okay. Ten minutes no. How are you? No, I'm very inflexible when it comes to starting meetings on time. Right. And also, if you look at how uh, the work from home thing, you know, it, all the video calls, what I found is people are dead punctual on video calls mm -hmm. because calls generally start dead on time and finish on time. Yeah. It's a Unlike meeting. people ambling in and yeah. making small yeah. talk and making coffee yeah. and walking around, it's a lot more disciplined when you're doing things on video. Right. I don't like it. I, I feel the interaction is needed yes, and it's yeah. necessary. It's useful. Uh, but um, it has made people a lot more punctual. Hmm. So. And also more dressed at home. Well, <laughs> at least from here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Invariably, yeah. I'm having a sarong. Yeah. <laughs> a pair of boxer yeah. shorts. Rocking up in the worst yeah. of times. But um, what, what is it that triggers you off? As in, pisses me off yeah. about yeah. arrogance. Okay. Uh, People interfering in my personal life and trying to tell me what to do. That's true. Um, but that's Sri Lanka. Yeah, but don't have to tro like it. That don't is true. tolerate that's it. That's true. I've come no, to I live by my own rules yeah. and uh, they haven't been conventional, so that's. Uh, yeah, so, that. And, and I just hate people making, you know, using too many words to say, say something. No. You know, there are some people who can't say hello without taking it like 45 <laughs> minutes. Those are the ones who know the dictionary, oh man. God. Yeah, limited so vocabulary tedious. is also nice at times. So tedious. Yeah. <laughs> but um, this this thing called, you know, that everyone is preaching these days is the thing called well-balanced life. Especially mm. when we were got stuck with whole COVID in 2020. People were like, oh my God, this is where you can like do things at home. We need to have more balance in our life. Uh, in your work environment, I think they have always believed in promoting a balanced life. How do you sort of, sort of handle that today? So the thing is, um, if you look at the work environment, right, we have traditionally had very hierarchical work environments. Mm. So everybody wants to impress the boss. Yeah. So invariably at some of the companies that I worked with, in um, one in particular, People used to come out and if the boss's car was in the parking lot, they'd quickly go upstairs and wait till the car went off the parking lot. Because they wouldn't want their, their car, car out. Empty. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So that was just, to me, that's just absolute yeah, you know? true. Uh, At the end of the day, you need to do your work and if you finish in four hours, just go home. Off, yeah. yeah, exactly. Unfortunately, those things are not a part of the, uh, the work culture here. 
So for me personally, I don't like the term work-life balance because work and life is all a part of one greater um, um, mix Ecosystem, of things yeah. that you have to balance your own, your personal well-being, your family, your you know health, whatever. So I have always actually, maybe not in the first year or two that I uh, worked and worked like a mad dog trying to achieve things that yeah. were yeah. these impossible dreams, uh, but. Um, as I realized what you could lose in life when you focused on one thing only and not on the rest of your life, um, I started really paying a lot of attention to how I balanced my time at work and time with my family and myself, doing things that I enjoyed doing. So one of the things, and this is my, my boss when he interviewed me, my current boss when he interviewed me, I reminded him that this morning. Mm. He asked me, so is there something I need to know about you? And this is me joining this company not got my letter of appointment yet. And I said, yes, um, if you have 21 days of leave that I'm entitled to, I'll probably take 22. <laughs> so I have taken every single day I have been entitled to every year that I've worked. Yeah. And I have never refused leave to any of my colleagues, ever, yeah. ever. And because I think it's very important, right? Take your leave, balance yeah. your life, do what you want to do. And what's the point? It's not that they're going to like, give you a gold medal when you're leaving saying, oh my Absolutely. God. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and so many people, you ask them what they're going to do if they want to retire. Why do they want to retire? Oh, there are so many things I want to, I'm passionate about. I want to follow them when I retire. By the time you're retired, you're doddering. Yeah. Most people are doddering around. Yeah. They don't have the energy to do it. Exactly. You do it you, while you can. Yeah, you need pill support to keep Absolutely. it going. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not the right thing to do at that time. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, we are going to dig into this. When we do come back, we're going to get into our final segment and talk a little bit more. Do stick around. This is Done on Fire. At the Colombo City Centre Residences, as you could see, the sun is setting and I'm in conversation with Salinda uh, about life, love and everything in between. <laughs> uh, wanted to speak about... The roaring uh, success. Uh, <laughs> uh, yours has achieved a different part, mine has achieved a very dry part. <laughs> so, we are both qualified to, uh, to what has to go wrong. <laughs> Um, all right, so I wanted to speak to you a little bit about, um, by the way, I've ordered dessert for you. Brilliant. Uh, if it okay. ever comes up on time. George, <laughs> can you get my dessert? I have a person. Of course. Yeah, called George. George, I... he'll get it. Um, okay. In the meantime, where was I? Um, yeah, uh, you are attached to uh, Creda, mm -hmm. so, and also the fact that you are into environment and giving back to environment. Where did it come from? Are, are you like... Always been a part. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. always been a part of my life. I've been traveling to the jungles from a very young age. Uh, always loved the outdoors. Are you the whole camping kind of a person. Used to be. Oh, I've good, become good. a little more glamping now with age. Better, right? yeah, with age. Yeah, with age. If I it's still go and camp go under a tree. Wash. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wash was always done. I just go and sit in the river and the fish should do the job. <laughs> Instant oh, clean. Hey, okay. <laughs> little little tip. <laughs> uh, but um, uh, yeah, I still go and camp right. occasionally, but uh, I prefer to get somebody else to yeah. do all the hard work. Yeah. Um, but yes, used to camp a lot, to have travel the length and breadth of this country, uh, seen some beautiful places. So environment has always been a big part of my life. Mm -hmm. And today, I think, don't you, I don't know whether you'll agree with me because you have kids who are young as well, um, they are very conscious about the environment. If you do take more than my mom's generation, mm. I think right now they are more aware of the fact that, you know, why should we use this bag or can we like get something where you can reuse. Actually, the new restaurants even, they make sure because youngsters just go and put a post saying that mm. it's bloody plastic. Mm. So people are more worried about it. Do you yeah. feel the young is more aware of the Yeah, animals? absolutely. I think also, say when we were growing up, it wasn't a big issue. Yeah. You know, there were 7 million people or something like that Correct. in Sri Lanka and it wasn't a, uh, pollution wasn't a huge issue well, at that time. Some right? yeah, we have done producing. Yeah, very busy. <laughs> yes, <we have laughs> very busy. busy. Uh, the lockdown, we are done. <laughs> <laughs> I think lockdown, people, people are like, enough. <laughs> <laughs> Take a break. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, they were locked at home. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, um, so, uh, so if if you if you think about it, there's a lot more access to information. Mm. So the impact to planet that all these things do. 
people know about it a lot more. Yeah. That's a little bit. Ah, George, <laughs> can you get the dessert, please? George got us a pizza. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally Nutella and pizza. Yeah, I think I'll you'll pass on. Give that a miss. <laughs> Fine. I'm watching my figure. <laughs> I watch my figure. Yeah. I can't see beyond a certain point. Yeah. <laughs> I watch my figure expanding <laughs> over the years. Yeah, I think I'm just going to dig into it later when the camera is a bit off. Uh, so we're talking about um, environmental issues. Yeah. Um, Sri Lanka has taken a huge stand in like reusing, recycling, even when it comes to like the apparel industry. Uh, how are you? Are you someone who says like you know no to many clothes? I try to, uh, but I've got a bit of a weakness for jeans and yeah. shoes and all kinds of things. So, uh, but I try, especially now in the last year and a half, I realize how much useless stuff I have. Yeah, literally, in you're my just wardrobe. Staying at home, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I started becoming very conscious about what the impact is every time you make a shirt, how much water gets used, how many chemicals get used, so that kind of stuff. Mm. But also through the uh, the the fact that people have access to this information, means that people realize that. It doesn't have to be these grand, big scale environmental projects that can change the planet. Mm. It's what you and I do on a daily basis. Correct. Making choices that we make, mm. you know, not to use plastics or single use plastics, not to use uh, disposable clothing, whatever mm. it may be, you know, use your clothes for a longer period of time, yeah. recycle, upcycle, do all these funky yeah. things that are happening right now. But they all have an impact to planet. Mm. So I think if that consciousness goes into the heads yeah. of 90% of the population, the impact in terms of how um, our waterways will get cleaner, our oceans will get cleaner, would be huge. Mm. So the responsibility is not on the part of governments or organizations to make these grand sweeping changes yeah. to uh, laws. It's up to us as individuals to take the responsibility into our own hands. And if each one of us does something small, the impact, collective impact would be huge. Yeah, it's also how you are inbuilt with the information, I think, from a time you were very young. Absolutely. So you feel bad about, uh, you know, going yeah. so much against what nature has, yeah. what, what nature can give. I mean, parents, for example, we feed a child with a, pla with a yogurt cup or something yeah. like that and toss it out. What's the message going to the kid? Yeah, you can just you throw know, it. You if you don't just throw want it, it, just exactly. throw it. Just yeah. throw it. So those are the things that we all need to take responsibility yeah. for. Yeah, because back in the days, you know, canals were used to like just canals were used to just yeah. throw garbage from like houses. Wing. Still, <laughs> yeah, still true. to this day, <laughs> know. you know, and we started doing some work on, on trapping the garbage before it goes into the ocean. Yeah. And it's tons of stuff that get collected on a daily basis. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And these are people who can just swing it from their house, like yeah. out of the back. Yeah, yeah. And, and it happens and it's just mm. quite shocking. Um, but uh, it has been absolutely a pleasure having you. Uh, I'm so happy that you came on the show and thank spoke you. so well. And uh, thanks for sharing your insight. <laughs> thank uh, you. Very when much. you're doing your trip next time somewhere, um, some exotic place in Sri Lanka, mm. I think more people are traveling in Sri yeah, Lanka now, which are. is a good thing. Yes. Yeah. We have yeah. seen places that people Be, would yeah. have. Not, not seen been before. to before. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Not, it's not always fun to fly out. Yeah. <laughs> so, on that note, thank you so very much. Pleasure. Um, we will see you with another cool episode of Down on Fire. Till then, keep smiling, be safe, and uh, it's a wrap.